Welcome to another five at five, another victorious one. The smile is on my face. First thing I'm going to say, Eid Mubarak to all of the uh, people celebrating who are watching this. And let's get into the five at five. But if you haven't done so already, do me a favor and subscribe. Do it right now. That's your Eid present to me. Number one, very, very lucky Aaron Ramsdale. Look, I know this one is going to be a contentious one and I want you guys to get in the comments below and let me know how you see it. But on a different day, I reckon in the 52nd minute when Aaron Ramsdale comes charging out of his goal like a bull and tries to take the ball off um, a Bowen, I reckon that's a really, really difficult situation for a referee because... To me, when I see Aaron Ramsdale running out like that and going studs up, literally six studs up, that's reckless, that's out of control. I just wonder, you imagine West Ham qualify for the Europa League final and this is in the last minute, it's nil-nil, Jared Bowen goes through. If I'm a player and, you know, a significant trophy is riding on it, I might just think, you know what, I'll take the contact. It's a lottery. You don't know what's going to happen. The keeper's coming out at significant pace. But I just wonder, given that there's a Europa League second leg to play for for Jared Bowen in a few days, is he thinking, I don't really want to be part of that challenge? To me, if Jared Bowen keeps running in the direction that he's running in, Aaron Ramsdale gets a red card, plain and simple. He's had to take evasive action. And I guess it's a difficult one because he got booked for diving. And has he dived? Yes. But... If he didn't dive, then potentially he's getting a really, really serious injury. It's a, it's a tough one, and that's why I say it's a difficult one for the referee. I'm very, very relieved that that went in Arsenal's favour. But I don't think really, in my opinion, that that's the way the game should be played, where, you know, when you're having to take evasive action, you, you're you kind of the one that came, came off worse for it because you're the one with the yellow card and the t free kick's gone to the opposite team. Perhaps the only thing I would say is that maybe what Bowen should have done was jumped out of the way, not made it look like he was trying to dive, but just jumped out of the way and um, made it quite clear that, you know, what's that goalkeeper doing? I've had to get out of the way. But he almost looked a little bit sheepish afterwards and it seemed to accept the yellow card. But on the other hand, Arsenal players, they weren't annoyed at him. They were almost patting him on the back of the head as if they understood what he had to do. All in all, a really complex situation. But I have to say... Aaron Ramsdale sometimes needs to keep a lid on it. He needs to be a little bit more relaxed. Just like how Eddie Nketiah was when he was having people stepping to him in the last few moments of the game. But that will be point number two. So point number two, as I just mentioned, Eddie Nketiah. I thought he did brilliantly. I think before I get on to what this point is all about, this, some of these heated exchanges, what I want to say about Eddie Nketiah's performance, if you know ball you know how big of a performance that was from Eddie Nketiah. Yeah, people are going to say, oh, he didn't score a goal, he didn't get an assist, and he kept on shooting, and, you know, his shots could have been better. Away from home, in such an important game, the amount of pressure he took off the team, running the channels, making the ball stick, he was brilliant. And I, he deserved a goal. Some of the chances that he took as well, some of the shots that he took, they still resulted in corners for the team, which again brings all of the play up. Anyway, enough about Nketiah. I'm talking about the exchanges. Declan Rice embarrassed himself. Eddie Nketiah is a, is a footballer that he has known and played with for many, many years. And there he is saying, who the F are you? Repeatedly to Eddie Nketiah's face. What I love about that is that it's West Ham's time. Arsenal don't mind the time slipping away at that point. And Eddie Nketiah never, ever looked like it got under his skin. He was cool as a cucumber, facing up, not intimidated, letting Declan Rice waste his own team's time. And I love to see it. And also what I love to see was that spirit that exists in the Arsenal camp. By the end of it, every single player was involved. There have been times with Arsenal where I haven't really seen that, but I love the fact that now every single player is ready to back their teammates. So Eddie and Ketia did brilliantly. And the other exchange that I'm curious about, and I want some of I want some help if anyone knows what this was all about. And I don't know if you noticed this, but at the end of the game, Granite Xhaka and Gabriel, they were having a bit of a discussion. And it seemed like Granite Xhaka was really on to Gabriel. Gabriel, who played well, could have done better for the Bowen goal, I'll say that, but still scored a brilliant winner. Um, Xhaka, it seemed to me like there was something that Xhaka was saying to Gabriel rather than the other way around. So what was it? Does anyone have any ideas? Obviously, they're doing that thing where they're covering their mouths. But, you know, 
Granite Xhaka didn't do it the whole time. So if any lip reading experts out there can shed a bit of light on what was being said, I'm just really curious. Number three, this is a guy I mentioned a few weeks back, but he deserves being mentioned again. Nicholas Jova, because listen, we have had almost 200 corners that we have not conceded from this season. I mean, come on. It's a brilliant, brilliant effort. Now, I don't know whether Nicholas Jova's remit is only defensive corners or all set pieces, attacking as well as defensive, as well as free kicks, blah, blah, blah. In any case, this game, we scored two goals from effectively free kicks or set pieces. And then on top of that, we have... Um, not conceded in flipping ages. I, I actually think there was one that came from a corner or a free kick, but perhaps there was enough time that had elapsed afterwards to regard it as open play. But in any case, whether it's no goals or just one goal, what an incredible effort from Nicolas Jova, a bit of an unsung hero this season. So I take my hat off to you. Well done, Nicolas Jova. Number four, the celebration police are out in force again. And listen, I have to admit, this is something I've spoken about so many times this season. Every single time, Arsenal go and put in a good performance, a nasty performance that where we, we're playing some of the dark arts, we're holding on to the ball at throw-ins just to take a few seconds away, it gets people's back up. The media, everyone out there, they like that naive Arsenal, the one that overcommits, the one that seems to try and win a game 3-1 when you can just see it out 2-1 and instead you end up drawing 2-2. That's the team that the media like. And now we've got a bit of that dark art about us, that wisdom about us, and we're grinding out these results, we're positioning ourselves up for that top four spot, and people hate it. I love to see it. I absolutely love every time Arsenal win, having people criticise our celebrations, players, fans, pundits. This time, it was the turn of Chris Sutton. And the funny thing about it, as you can see here, is that he also is by his own admission saying teams should be able to celebrate. But when it's Arsenal, they just can't take it. Let me tell you one thing. If Mikel Arteta has cultivated that siege mentality of they all hate us and the players have cottoned on to that, it only serves as extra motivation. If he's done that, he's doing something right. Chris Sutton, Ruben Neves and all of your cronies, you carry on complaining. As long as you're complaining... Arsenal are winning and long may it continue. Number five, a season defining 20 hours could be coming up for Arsenal and Tottenham. Saturday the 7th of May, 7.45pm, Tottenham away at Liverpool. 2pm Sunday the 8th of May, Arsenal at home to Leeds. This is the weekend, my friends. This is the weekend where Arsenal are banking on one of the best teams in the world and Liverpool Football Club at home, at Anfield, chasing not only the Premier League, but this dream of a quadruple taking on Tottenham. Look, if Liverpool do what we all hope they will do and then Arsenal follow up with a win at home against Leeds, which is, let's face it, on paper what you would expect to happen, then Arsenal are all set to... Um, to get that breathing space to allow them to get that top four. We might even be able to do it at White Hart Lane, which would just be incredible for everyone in attendance. But if Tottenham somehow come back from Anfield with three points, then it's going to be really, really pressurised for Arsenal going into that North London derby. Let me know what you think is going to happen because I can't even imagine what it's going to do to the pressure at Arsenal if somehow Tottenham go and beat Liverpool at Anfield. Is there any chance of that? Are Spurs going to be Spursy, live up to their uh, long, long gained reputation? Or is something unthinkable going to happen? And Arsenal versus Leeds, surely we're going to beat them, right? Let me know in the comments below what you think is going to happen. And wouldn't it be great if it was all set up for Arsenal to steal top four at White Hart Lane? On that note, I'm going to leave you and thank you very much for watching as usual. Please do subscribe and I'll see you in that season defining 20 hours. Liverpool v Tottenham, Arsenal versus Leeds.